Welcome to the Great Lakes Smoke Podcast Show. What we talk about basically is the love and the passion of cigars, pipe smoking, tobacco, alcohol, brothers chilling out and having a good time, laughter. Well, well, how else are you going to you know, enjoy a nice bourbon? And you kind of went animalistic it. on uh, tobacco buying. You? And the Rocky yeah. Patel Pure and Simple. I don't know, that, that thing just tastes so good. Absolutely. We're pretty excited about it. Want to thank you all for joining on in and uh, do me a big favor. Get that watch party going. Get that share going. Get everybody going because it's going to be a hot, hot show tonight. Uh, we can't thank you guys enough for joining us. And um, we are excited about what's going to happen tonight. Uh, you know what? With, with everything that's going on with COVID and so many businesses that are being affected by it, we're going to bring on a special guest later and talk about what's happening in the cigar lounge situation. And, um, you know, we're hearing lots of different stories. So you're going to hear one shortly by a man who's been in business for over 20 years. And we're looking forward to that. Other than that, arrest you is get yourself a pen, get paper, make sure you uh, uh, write down a lot of information that we're going to hopefully give you tonight. You know, or they you can, can also their, back on the they show. They set their phone on record. They, they don't could. have to write everything they could. down. But, you know, everybody likes to write, see what's going on. Nobody likes to write and, anymore. No. All right. So if you want to email <laughs> us, email us at greatlakesmokeshow at AOL.com. All right. And after the great interviews that we're going to have tonight and surprise guests, um, you all know, if you don't, we're going to have Cousin Frank down in Chile, Florida going to be doing the stump the choo choo yeah uh, frost advisories down there we will have a, a little uh, gift to give away for you guys this tonight's guest is uh gifts are going to be from drew estates so uh we'll get you something we'll show you what's going really? on a drew little estates? later what we got? yeah i don't know just a, a little box yeah. full of goodies wow so, but we'll look at it later anyway okay. so Folks, for all you newbies that are out there that don't know who we are, my name's Ronnie Pecorini. I don't even know who we are. My brother, Bob. Well, it's okay. At your age, you don't know <laughs> what we are. That's my brother, Bob Pecorini. How you doing, folks? The man with the pipe, the man behind the curtain, does the scene, the technical work of this show, Kyle Gesso. Good evening, everyone. Look at that. In his old uh, <laughs> Bill Cosby talk, right? Look at that. And then down in Lake Mary, Florida, the one and only Stump the Chooch specialist, Cousin Frank. You really Hello. have to location away, though. Oh, that's yeah. right. <laughs> when you're on the uh, WITSAC, uh, yeah. you don't give the location. Witness protection. <laughs> Florida, in Florida. in oh. Wyoming. Florida, uh, Florida, Arizona. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, well. Unknown okay. Lake, Florida. Somewhere in, in Florida. Somewhere, yeah. That? Yep, there you anyway. Go. So anyway, guys, thank you again for joining on board. Um, there's lots to talk about tonight and a lot of uh, information. And uh, we are going to have also uh, uh, the owner. Not only is he an owner, but he's also a military vet, Air Force. So we, we're going to thank him personally here for coming on board and do, doing the right thing for the red, white, and blue. And we, uh, we're honored to have him. So uh, moving forward here, let's, let's introduce the man himself. Uh, from the uh, Pipe Puffer Lounge in Indianapolis, Mr. Ed Prosco, is it? Parasco. Parasco, yes. Parasco. Uh, Parasco. Uh, yes, you know me already, folks. I mess up every name. I can it's even right. miss my own name, so don't worry about it. <laughs> You'll have 10 different names by the time the show ends. <laughs> <laughs> Do I hear 15? Do I hear 15? <laughs> Good evening, Ed, and thank you so much for joining us. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for taking time out. And uh, I know you're closed and uh, you get together. I know you wanted to go home, but uh, we dragged you in here tonight, and we can't thank you enough. Well, no one and, says uh, no, and they know they're coming on to this show. 
Yeah. That's right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> World well, famous. Well, well, we, 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 we make an offer they can't refuse. That's oh, yeah. is that what you gave him, Frank? I didn't know about that tonight. All right, good. This big good. guy came to the door and said I had to stay, so I figured, well, you know. But I think Alan Gold told me to tell this man he has to stay, right, Alan? Alan's listening. <laughs> yeah, we got on. Tim Garrity. He's on. We got Scott. We got Pat. We got Danny. We got Bruce. We got a bunch of our people on board. And in-house later on, for all you Mason brothers, we do have a special guest who's going to bid you all farewell for the next six to seven months while he moves out of this terrible, terrible state and going to a very nice country. But we'll get into that later on. Warmer climate. Much warmer climate, indeed. Even hotter than your, with your climate, Frank. <laughs> yes, indeed. He's but, even going further south. <laughs> and Dave Ellsworth, hang as long as you can, buddy. I appreciate it. Whatever you do, it's, uh, it's good. And uh, he also says, hello, Ed. David Ellsworth from Richmond, Virginia area is giving you a hello. Hello. We're spreading out everything here. Um, Alan, yes, Alan, I know you're watching. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to make sure. So I had to make sure I, he hears me. Uh, Rich, uh, say, thank you. Ed, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into, uh, involved in the world of the Leaf. Well, it kind of happened by accident, I guess, in a way, but uh, I worked for a major appliance retailer in the area for a number of years. The store happened to be right next to the smoke shop here. So on my lunch breaks or dinner break, I would come over and have a cigar and whatever. Just got to talk to the owner, the previous owner, and uh, we got to talking from time to time. And I said, you know, this is something that'd be kind of cool. So he said, well, one day he tells me, I need some part-time help. Would you be interested in working some part-time? This was back in 95, 1995. So I said, yeah, sure, why not? So I worked part-time for him for a little over a year. Well, a year and a half, I guess it was or so. And uh, then he decided he was going to retire because his wife was retiring from her job. So he asked me if I was interested in purchasing the, uh, the business, and uh, we got together and did. So that was uh, September of 98. Uh, the the original business started in 1976 Ooh. in a mall, of course, and in 1988 moved to our current location right across the street in a, a strip mall. We were in a Simon property before that, and as you well know, uh, you can't smoke, you can't do anything in a, in a oh, major yeah, mall yeah. anymore. So here's here we are. You know, this is 20 what 22 years later. And it's, there's been ups and downs, you know, I mean, I came in at the end of the boom, but I experienced some of the boom when I was here part time, when you couldn't get cigars, and uh, you put whatever you could find on the shelf, and hopefully people would buy it. Boy, there was some crap out there at that time. I mean, <laughs> yeah. really love sticks, you know, as you well know. But uh, things have been going well. I know we've had this COVID bullshit this year, and uh, it's been a, a trying time. Uh, Overall, though, business has been up, and I think the major reason for that is because more people are staying home and working from home, so therefore, they have more time to smoke because they couldn't smoke at the office. They couldn't smoke wherever they were working. Now they're home, and they have more time, so we've seen an increase in business over the last uh, four months, probably. Now, are you open? I mean, people can come in and smoke in the lounge, or how is that well, Every state's different. So Indiana had had some ups and downs, changes from time to time. We had actually shut the lounge down at the onset. And then we were limiting uh, the number of people that could come in. Lounge was still closed to one person at a time. We Whoa. never totally shut down. All right. Uh, well, that's good at least. But it was trying because, you know, people, curbside sounds great. But the problem you have is the pipe smoker comes comes to the door and he says, hey, give me a pound of Lane 1 Q. No problem. The cigar smoker, hell, he doesn't know what the name of the cigar is. He knows what it looks like. So he walks in the humidor. He's got to pick it out. So it's that's a, the, the thing that I see that was the, the most trying about that if you were to go curbside. We, didn't, we never did go curbside. Uh, the lounge opened back up, limited. We had seven seats. So we limited down to four. And then now we're at five and we're staying at five. So, yeah, people can come in and smoke. Uh, 
there is a mask mandate in our city. So people are supposed to wear masks when they come into the store. Obviously, kind of hard to smoke with a mask on. You just have to puncture a hole through it, right? Yeah. That's well, <laughs> to, change, to tell you this other story, a friend of, friend of mine was in Vegas two weeks ago. And they have to have the mask on all the time between puffs. You're so you got to, so you sit at the you sit there and you got the mask on. You pull it down. You take a puff on your cigar and you put the mask back up. So it's crazy. So Everything's that, different. So then you Everything. exhale so you know, into even, the mask. Even in Vegas, they're trying to go no smoking anywhere. Yes, which is crazy. I, I can't see how people are going to sit there gamble without smoking. I mean, uh, it's That's just true. one of those things. Oh, they're they're building the air exchanges. They have. What's the problem? Uh, I don't know. You know, you don't but smell they, anything. We've got uh, Terre Haute, Indiana, which is a, on the Illinois border, basically to the west of us, quite a ways. They're opening a new casino here, building one, and that is going to be a smoke-free facility. Well, I'm sure wow. they uh, will have so, a good time trying to get people in there. That's what I figured. I mean, you know, and not to be... When you go to the Vegas, you have a lot of Asian people, and they love to smoke, and they smoke well, cigarettes they, all they, the time. They smokers. So they, you're going to tell these people they can't smoke? No. Well, they're not they're gonna gonna go. well un they unfortunately, here in Illinois, we've been a smoke-free state for I can't remember how long now, and we have multiple casinos, and all the casinos around here are smoke-free. So, I mean, it's not like any difference. So, And they well, still the Orientals sustain. The coming to Vegas for everything about Vegas, but also – you want to smoke. I you mean, that's smoke. just it. I mean, uh, it, it's crazy. Yeah, it's like gambling goes, smoking and drinking goes with gambling. You know, it's one of those things. <laughs> you know, <laughs> how can you tell people you can't have two to three? <laughs> but, you know, the thing The thing that gets me is if you don't like it, don't go there. You know, exactly. I don't like I don't like Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't like anything about Bed Bath & Beyond. So, you know what? I don't go there. Well, I think so, they're gone anyway. So if you you bar, put them out of business. Yeah. <laughs> but if you've got a bar that wants to smoke and people don't like it, don't go there. Go to the place you can't smoke. Exactly. That's my, well, this that's is, this is an ongoing argument about, you know, why should we, smokers, be subjected to what they want? I mean, we have rights too, and if we feel like smoking, we should have that uh, ability, you know? That is true. So make casinos uh, make for, for smokers. Half your casino for smokers and That's half it. for the non-smokers. Yeah. I mean, they're killing the business. They really are. They're killing the business. Even with the lounges. Yeah, we had a local lounge that uh, you can only smoke in there for 90 minutes. You had to make an appointment to go in. And if you went into the humidor, you were not able to touch any cigars. You had to walk in with one of the sales reps and point out to what you wanted to. Or if you wanted to look at a cigar, <clears throat> just to look at it. The sales rep had to look at it and kind of turn it in your hand and, you know, that's explain cool. this is what it is. And uh, and that's what it was like. So that's, it crazy. Was, um, that's crazy. I mean, it's like going into a hospital setting or something, you know. That's true. Look, you have a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, come on. <laughs> so well, people, one other go well, I was gonna say, one other comment I was going to make about if you get off that subject about our, our store. Uh the name is misleading because the individual that started this, Larry Stout, back in the 70s, he was an avid pipe smoker. And Larry started the shop, Pipe Puffer Smoke Shop, because he wanted to promote pipe smoking. Well, you know what happened as the time went on, the pipe smoking uh, fell out of favor and cigars really took a big hit and went up and up and up. And more people wanted to smoke after the boom. So now, we're a pipe puffer smoke shop that really focuses more on cigars than we do on pipes and tobacco. So the it, pipes, it's have, changed. pipes have made a big comeback, though. Well, they have to some degree, yeah. But if you had, a, if we had to run the store based on pipes alone, no, I don't think you could do that. Close up. You no. couldn't do that. Not today. And, and pipe smokers, because we're all pipe smokers, as right? Well, I mean, but. I think pipe smokers will also smoke cigars. I mean, just about everybody we know smokes a pipe, smokes cigars as well. So it's, you know, you got both worlds. Yeah, and some of the older fellas, I mean, really, really older fellas that were pipe smokers from the get-go, a lot of those guys don't smoke cigars. I'm surprised at that. I've got oh, yeah. you know, older older customers, and I say I'm old, but they're talking 80-year-old customers that don't smoke cigars at all, but they what? smoke pipe. So, you know, it's just interesting. Yeah, I've always smoked both, so 
Yeah. So why? Well, he said basically 80, so that gives you your well, I have, a, I have a little bit of lead weight. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> you're not on the door, yeah. Don't, don't yeah, kid I'm yourself, Bob. <laughs> there don't, you go. Don't I kid smoke yourself. everything and anything. Don't matter to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably legal there now, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> but recreational, too. <laughs> right, right. It helps clear. It helps keep his mind clear, right? Yes. yes. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Yes, it brings him back to the 60s. That's it. Bob is still lives in the 60s, Frank. I know. <laughs> hey, it's a great place. <laughs> <laughs> Music was the best. I mean, come on. <laughs> and you're also uh, Air Force. Where did you, uh, when did you serve and where did you end up uh, going? Well, I served from, well, back in the early, late 60s, early 70s. So that kind of puts uh -huh. my age out there but uh uh i was in arizona i was in uh, i went overseas to greece and uh i was in eod i was a bomb technician so oh wow this yeah. is, there's not a lot of us out there it's totally changed now from what it used to be but oh you know, yeah that, everybody, they're sitting not home too on many computer. survivors right <laughs> <laughs> no but now they've, now they've got robots and all these big suits and everything we didn't have any of that so yeah. it's, it's really changed because you went from booby trap stuff back then to uh, improvised explosive devices today, which a lot of them are technologically driven, which they weren't back then. So, you know, back then you're looking for trip wires and that kind of thing. And today they've got electronic devices and whatever else. So it's really evolved quite a bit. But, uh, you know, I, I had a good four year tour. I really enjoyed myself in the military. I, I think I grew up and I learned responsibility, which is something that has helped me through the rest of my life. So, and I thank every veteran out there, and I thank everybody for their service because we really appreciate it. We wouldn't be where we're at today without all the vets. Absolutely. Well, we thank you, especially <laughs> you. Yes, we're, uh, we're kind of vet-oriented as far as our listeners, and uh, we actually um, try to take up uh, fundraising for our military men and women. Um, there you uh, go. You know, you're probably a little young. Uh, Jerry, uh, are you familiar with Briar Nation uh, group? Oh, yeah. I'm a member. Oh, you're, oh, okay. okay. Well, we are too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we actually just had Jeremy uh, uh, Feliciano, Feliciano about Feliciano on, right? Jeremy, yeah. So we had a nice. Uh, we sent some skipper. nice skipper. There you go. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. yeah. Good yeah. guy. It's yeah. a good group of people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They are. Good. You ever go to the Chicago Pipe Show? You know, that's one thing I have not done. I have yeah. not. Been. You have to come this year. You got to come see us. It's uh, It'll be next year. Yeah, that would be well, nice. Yeah, that'd you know? be next year well, if we yeah, have it. Sure is next year. June or July, I don't know. Hopefully, still trying. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. hopefully. I'm yeah. actually positive. I'm tired of there you activity. go. Uh, I want to believe it's going to happen, and um, I think you know, it's going to happen. And you know, when it gets canceled for sure, then I'll be bummed out. But until then, we'll know we're going to have a show. Well, our buddy, our buddy Jim, who runs the Pipe Show, he said he's going to be there. I think 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 he's going to be there. I you can say that. Yeah, start it, saving you just now. Seem to spend <laughs> money without realizing it, but it's all worth it. It's all uh, to keep the industry going. And um, there's it's 350 fun. vendors on the norm. We don't know what's going to happen next year. Obviously, again, with uh, a lot of uh, Europeans and yeah, Asian because it is a global event. I mean, people fly in from really all over the world for this. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, uh, yeah, they've been. They've been going forward, canceling a lot of events for the first part of next year. So hopefully, okay. I know. Well, at this point, we want to see anything and anything. Uh, we were supposed to be in Vegas in July, and that got canceled. We were supposed to do the show there, like we did the, the year before. So we're just waiting to see who's going to have anything, uh, which we would love to be part of because uh, we all have a passion of the leaf and everything that goes around with it. But as far as the shop itself, do you, uh, are you able to make any plans uh, at all for events or uh, do you have any cigar companies coming down and sales repping and doing any events at all uh, planned out or uh, everyone's no. just waiting? To see? I'd say the events pretty much are on hold right now. 
we have none uh, planned for the future. We have to see what's going to happen with uh, after January 20th and uh, see what's going to happen going forward because we, you know, we have no idea at this point. No, uh, a lot of the reps are telling me that they're kind of happy in a way that they don't have to do events. A few. <laughs> <laughs> at least they could stay <laughs> home. <laughs> you know? Well, that's probably it too, yeah. But no, it, a lot of times you get the same core groups coming to the events. It's yeah. hard to get new people. At least it is for us, even with the email and the social media. And now, especially, I can't, a lot of people are afraid to go out. They don't want to go where a bunch of people are. So, right. Or if I know that Ron's wife is going, I don't even show up because I know I'm not going to win a thing. So I just don't even go. Oh, well, that, that, that's a given. <laughs> yeah. my, my wife is one of those lucky charms. I mean, once she married me, her luck just went out the window. <laughs> We've got customers like that that come to the events, and it seems like the same guy will win every time, and everybody's grown, and oh, not him again, you know. So. <laughs> well, everybody knows the fix is in, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. we, we got, uh, yes, yeah, I guess. One of our listeners, Andre Kresser from uh, New York, this guy, anytime he jumps on, he's he's a winner of Stump the Chooch. Uh, but we have him blocked now permanently. So oh, he's, yeah. okay, you know, he's busted. He's busted. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, Frank's uh, nemesis there. He... That's my nemesis. <laughs> Actually, Kyle has him rerouted. When he calls in, he goes to Hong Kong. <laughs> <laughs> They're watching a completely different show over there. <laughs> Hope that banner wasn't showing up there. I got some kind of crap no, going on. No. Yeah, you know, we got a lot of stuff going on. Oh, Kyle, you know, we didn't forget to do the um, – Kyle, you're showing the uh, sponsors already? Okay, we can. It's showing uh, – yeah, we, yeah, you got a black uh, screen going on. We oh, didn't, there we go. Okay, did we lose – are we going no. sponsors? Do we have to uh, – because I know we didn't start that, so uh, sorry about that. We can do sponsors. Uh, you want, did you want to do sponsors, Kyle? Is that what's happening? Uh, no, I, I – I don't know what Teresa's is looking at because we're DAV. fine. No, DAV was on the screen. We're fine. No. We're okay. I can do sponsors if you want me to. Just let me know. You know what? And if you don't mind, I, I missed it in the beginning because I was so excited to get you on. Folks, take a look at some of our sponsors here. And if you, too, want to become one of our sponsors, get in touch with us, PM us, Facebook us, email us. We love to promote and help you with your business. Kyle, take it away. Our sponsors are DAV Cigars out of New York. Decades of experience combined with true love and deep understanding of cigars result in the highest level of standard of each DAV hand-rolled cigar. Next sponsor is RNA Treasures out of Tampa Bay, Florida, the last of a legacy. The last inventory from Thomas Cristiano in a warehouse where everything is aged and well kept for all your pipe and smoking needs. And finally, the Chicago Pipe Collectors Club, one of the largest and oldest pipe groups in North America with the largest pipe show worldwide. Every first weekend in May, always looking for new members, and if you're interested, please contact via Facebook. And now, back to you, Ron. Appreciate that. And uh, again, anybody who would like to sponsor, join us. And uh, Mr. Ing Tang from Singapore, thank you very much for joining us tonight. I don't know what time it's over there by you, but I don't know. But uh, thank uh, you. Andre, <laughs> you'll get Andre's call later. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Tang, for joining. And um, those are our sponsors for right now. And the uh, rest of you, again, jump on board so we can promote your business too. Ed, thanks for holding on for that. Uh, take it away. <laughs> take, it, take it away. Take it away. So um, how many sticks uh, or different types of uh, cigars do you have? I gather you have the big names. Uh, how, how is the boutique department coming along at the shop? We don't focus a lot on boutique. Uh, our side of town, we have more blue collar and uh, working type guys. So... We have to have the core, fo focus on the core uh, core brands. Padron, Fuente, Macanudo, Punch, the General Cigar Offerings, uh, Romeo and Julieta, some of that. But we do so have... It's the real junk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not all junk. Okay. Yeah. We've got some good stuff. Uh, 
uh, also boutique. Well, my father really, I don't consider my father a boutique because they've really got some really great cigars out oh, yeah. there. Yep. Uh, we do do Roma craft. We do some Dunbarton stuff as well. Uh, limited on that. Uh, another one that's done real well for us has been the Agonorsa brand, which would really JFR and the lunatic, uh, that 880, that they've got an eight by 80 Bellicoso lunatic and the, the rep by 80. Yeah. Did you say? <laughs> yes. Was the that rep a three and a half hour smoke? <laughs> yeah, it is. That's rep. Linda Lovelace's that's, brand. That's right? what you call an all day <laughs> smoke right there. Eight eight by 80. 80. Yeah. yeah. That's an the all day smoke. Things in, and he showed me this eight by 80 and I looked at him. I laughed. I go, who the hell's going to buy those? And he goes, trust me. Trust me. You got to put that will. So I put a 30 count box in and boom, it's gone. Really? Yeah, tell the hell out of them. It's just amazing. It's a gimmick and everybody wants to try it. I want to ask Rep you this. Have you got a cutter for that cigar? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, Alan Gold, yeah. The Vertigo has an 80. Alan gun. has Great it. Okay. Alan there. has everything. <laughs> Shameless plug there for Alan. But anyway. Unbelievable. Yeah, they do have an 80 rank. But I'm just, I was amazed at how well they sell. And the funny part of it is you get a lot of short guys buying those big cigars. I mean, Napoleon <laughs> complex. Napoleonic. They want to look yeah, like Edward yeah. Edward G. Robinson. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. We call that a guy that's five foot six smoking an eight, eight by eighty. It's got to look a little funny. Yeah. Think, you we know? call well, that uh, compensation. <laughs> <laughs> he's yeah. wishing he's got one of them. You know. Hey, who knows? Maybe, maybe he uses that for a stepladder in case he can't reach the next cigar. <laughs> maybe he's got a Monica at home. You know, you never know. So. <laughs> you never know, Kyle. <laughs> I tell you. But so what, what is the name of that one again? This way, everybody else can maybe take a look at that. You can make fun of it. <laughs> it's called the Lunatic. Lunatic. The lunatic. It's an 880 Lunatic Maduro. They have a Maduro and a Habano wrapper, both. Really? We saw yeah. a lot of Maduro. Yeah. Well, I think the women buy a lot of those, too. I'm not sure why, but they do. <laughs> I... What hey. Lunatic is in your oh. head? <laughs> a little Pink Floyd. Yeah. <laughs> sure. There you go. That's that's a, a big cigar. That really is. Yeah, that's, that's something that you would get at a circus or something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the or you're, or you're sitting there smoking it, waiting for it to explode on the end of you, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, if, if you guys remember 20 years ago or so, those cigars were unheard of. Perdomo, I think it was, had that 80 ring uh, that they had, that old lady with no teeth smoking. Remember that? It was in Mensa or something it was called, I think. And everybody laughed at that. You gotta be kidding me. Who the hell's gonna smoke those? And now, 60s, 70s, 80s, they sell. It's a perceived value, I think. I guess so. Yeah. To me, I'd rather smoke two or three smaller cigars because to me, there's more flavor in yeah. the smaller ring. I agree. That, that big ring you lose because you've got a lot of filler and not as much wrapper ratio. Right. And, you know, unless they tweak the blend real well, you, you're losing some flavor there. But still, so, I mean, just to, to draw on a cigar that big, it's got to be kind of difficult. Uh, it actually draw. I smoke. Try to smoke one. It uh, it's too big for me, but it it, it draw. It drew fine. Really? And it has flavor for that big a cigar. So they must have tweaked the blend with some more Lajero, I suppose, in there mm -hmm. to beef it up because it does have some flavor. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. But not oh, my cup of tea. Right. <laughs> Not mine either. No, 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 no. Well, no, no. oh, you like what's your favorite? You're basically like some me, Churchill. Okay. Bob. Well, the Gordos. I, I, that's about as big as I go right now. I'm smoking a Gordo. Uh, you know, sixty. But beyond that, no. It, it's that's just too much. Yeah, it is. You can't even hold it in between your fingers. Yeah. Uh, the, the mouth feels terrible. You hold terrible. it like this, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but the mouth feels terrible. It's too big. Yeah, too big. yeah. Uh, it is too big, uncomfortable. But hey, again, it's a um, might be a, a conversation piece, if anything. Probably very popular down Christopher Street, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> so we got a know, we got a customer say Brian Lewis. He said he recently enjoyed an eight by sixty lunatic, just for retailers. JFR by uh, Agar Norsa Leaf Cigars. Uh, yeah, I've never it. seen that one. Eat yeah. Leaf, yeah, we yeah. smoked Leaf. Leaf, leaf is great. Leaf, leaf is a good cigar. I, I like them. I got Norsa. Yeah, it's wrapped inside the leaf. Yeah, don't know about. No, that's different. 
That's uh, that's oh, no. yeah. that's Leaf by that's Oscar. Oscar. Right? That's Oscar. Oscar. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yes, yeah. yeah, that's different. And Bruce Agonorsa, said, uh, Agonorsa, I believe, was originally tropical tobacco years ago, and now it's Agonorsa Leaf, and they do uh, they do the Lunatic, they do the JFR, which is supposed to be just, the Just for Retailers brand. They also have a few other uh, offerings under that Agonorsa banner. And the nice thing about the JFRs, at least, is the price point is, is decent. You know, we've got a 24% tobacco tax here in Indiana. So how much? 24%? 24%. Oh. So our 6x60 Titan, which is the number one selling uh, cigar in that line, retails for $7.99. So you're getting a 660 for $7.99. A Padron six six sixty here, the seven thousand sells for about ten bucks. So you see the different a couple couple three dollars difference, and uh, yeah, people buy difference in quality too. Yeah, well, there's no, well, there's no doubt. Yes, <laughs> but for the one of our guys the, just said over here in Illinois, Scott Mullins said they sell for nine dollars. He just want to know are they any good? But you said the, it's got a good flavor, but it's just yeah. not uh, for your mouth, I guess. Uh, well, it's not a Padron, let's say that. And I, I'm I'm really biased because that's my favorite. I love Padron. I love Padron. Uh, yeah, is We've been a Padron best. dealer for over 30 years, and they're great cigars. Really? They're just they're the best. You don't have any problems. Never have a quality issue with those cigars yeah. at all. Consistent every time you smoke it. You know Absolutely. what you're going to get. It's it's never no no variations in a Padron. No. You know no, it is. You're right. what it is. It's top Rich. shelf, and um, and that's why they're the padrone. <laughs> eat, eat, eat a yep, uh, that's why. That was Frank's go-to, but we uh, got Frank to change a little bit, and he's got a lot of new flavors in the boutique world. Yeah, uh, I've, I've stepped out of my comfort zone. Listen, Padron uh, will always have that aura of uh, what I would call unmatched uh, from a quality standpoint across their line. And yep. stick to stick. So you, yep. ne I've never smoked this Padron and had it canoe or do any kind of craziness ever. No, no, never. Ever. It doesn't matter if you're smoking a 2000 series or you're going up to the, the family reserve. The, the quality is there and the consistency is there. Exactly. Absolutely. But, you know, there. hey, look, there's plenty of other cigars that are delicious, you know. Oh, it's no doubt. No doubt. And yeah. I've experienced them for sure. We, they uh, are good. Melanie and um, we, we uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Melanie Cisco. She's with uh, Fuente. Uh, she's their marketing specialist. She actually joined us on board. Matter of fact, folks, whoever is listening, just to let you know, we, I usually like to wait the following week, but special guest next week, Melanie Cisco. There you go. And Melanie <laughs> says she's got one of those in her humidor. <laughs> So, uh, Melanie, that's a big one to smoke. What, a lunatic? <laughs> a lunatic, indeed. Oh, my God. <laughs> Melanie, smoke the lunatic next week for us, will you? We want to see that one in person. <laughs> this is a family show. Let's do <laughs> <laughs> Well, then, we've got a good offering of Fuente as well. And all across the board, it seems like now with this pandemic business, there's been some spot shortages and spot the uh, outages of certain, uh, like Fuente Maduros, for example, have been in and out, hard to get it from time to time. Uh, they tell me the Dominican, the people down there in the factories, if you get a person that gets sick, one day they may have 80 or 60% of their rollers show up, and the next day, because they had people sick, they may have 20% because they're scared of the virus right. so that, that's the real issues with availability but uh you know we do the best we can with it obviously but there's still my trickling thing is, in right i'm sorry they're still trickling in i mean you're still getting product some yes right it just depends some things are hard to get and some are not but i think what they're doing too is they're taking the the brand uh, the uh, offerings their number one sellers the the list they go down to the the ones that sell the least they're not rolling those right away because they're rolling the hot items. So I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it is with a lot of these brands. So Bruce Bruce asked a question. He's like, ever smoked a Woody by Oscar Valladares? It's a 20 inch, 21 inch long with a hundred ring gauge. Seven and a that's half a hour right. smoke. That's <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, 
I feel inadequate now. <laughs> so do I. I'll be honest with you, Bruce. <laughs> when he went in. <laughs> Man, Johnny Holmes, right? <laughs> wow, wait. I mean, talk That's about doing hard. nothing for the next I don't couple think of days. enough shelf space uh, to take that box of cigars. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, who's got a humidor that big that can last? That, you know, I, I, it wouldn't fit in any of my humidors. I don't know what I'd do with it. No, oh, no, you need a suitcase. Oh, Stephen Trump for that. You know? <laughs> hey, let's who joined us, ladies, from his garage. Uh, I can special see guest. <laughs> How'd you know it was my garage? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know. That that twenty walls look like that. I like your clope. Uh, Get out of here. There, you know. <laughs> Welcome, folks, from Arango Cigars, the one and only Josh Weisner. Josh, man, How what's happening? Hello, gents. Hello, gents. Thank you. You see, me. we brought your man on. Ed is here. He actually took the Look invitation. Thanks for having him uh, join us. And uh, did you just come on, on, Josh, or were you listening earlier? No, I had a, I had another Zoom meeting from seven to eight. So okay, so uh, you didn't you didn't hear all the bad things that he was saying about you. No, I didn't hear any of that. Okay, go. Oh, go, no, go, you go. have to check the show out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit that they out. Sell cigars? I didn't. Yeah. They sell cigars. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what does a Rango sell these days. Everything. Yeah, I was oh. gonna say everything. Actually, can Simple you wait till I'm done lighting my cigar? Hey, Frank, how's it going, man? <laughs> good, good. <laughs> No, we got to keep Josh talking to you, Josh. He, Josh is he, in his garage. Yeah. <laughs> he's in his garage. Yeah, he's in his yeah, garage. I'm surprised oh, he can yeah, still feel his polar fingers polar. out there. He's dressed no, for I'm the part, I'm part of Polar Bear. I'm fine. <laughs> Are you good? Hey, you Kyle, how are you feeling, running? man? You feeling you know? better? I'm good, you Josh. Thank you. Running? You can yeah. the heater on. No worry. No, <laughs> I don't, actually. I, I actually told my wife today on the way home I'm going to go to Menards and buy a heater. Okay. It's the only place that could smoke a cigar in the winter. Yeah, I, right. I got oh, one of those tower heaters for the patio. Freaking fabulous. Out in the garage, it's it warms up everything in like a matter of minutes. I love it. That's a good idea. I was just going to get one of those that you hang up here and blow, but maybe the tower is a better way to go. Yeah, I, you hook up the propane tank to it and you turn it on. Phew, thing, that thing will heat you up in no time flat. Oh, I, I got a 52,000 BTU house. heater in my garage. <laughs> you hang out there in a t-shirt if you want. <laughs> no problem. I tell you. Hey, uh, we do have uh, the president of the Chicago Pipe Club, uh, Tim Garrity, would like to know how is the pipes and tobacco part of your business doing there, Ed? Uh, it's holding its own uh, slight increase, I would say, but nothing major. Uh, we we get we do have some younger people that come in that are in, interested in getting started with pipe smoking, but the majority of the business uh, are what I would say the seasoned veterans that have been pipe smokers pretty much their whole lives. That, that's our bread and butter. It really is. And oh, by the way, we are a Stoker be fourth generation dealer as well. Oh, so. good, okay. awesome, great, great. Yeah, I think stuff. I know awesome. somebody who's kind of connected with that brand, but I, 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 I don't <laughs> yeah, know maybe. the name right now. I <laughs> force them. I forced him. I told him, look, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Held a gun to my head, actually. But that's okay. No. You know, it's something that we noticed, though, in, the, in um, the Chicago Pipe show for the past probably 10 years, or maybe a little bit more, but definitely at least 10 years, a lot of younger people in their 20s are uh, coming to the like, show like and they're, they're picking up pipes. Um, you know, it seems to be a, a trend, it's, kind of like in the college uh, group. It's been the hipster thing, I'd say, you know. Yeah, the hipster thing. I guess you can call it that. That's, Ed, that's what... Ed doesn't allow any hipsters or liberals into his store. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, Ed. No, no problem with that. But... <laughs> hey, are you wearing a flannel? Get out of here. Get... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What is the biggest pipe tobacco uh, that you carry? I know you mentioned Lane earlier. One Q. But what is right. the, one Q, uh, the biggest? Far, yeah. One, one Q, Q by yeah. Lane? Oh, yeah. That's the number one. Oh, everywhere. Captain Black without the chemicals. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah, number, that's uh, it. How about that's pipes? What, forever. What, what are you carrying, basically, uh, as far as name pipes? Uh, I know since you're dealing with Josh, there must be a, a, a big handful coming out of a, a Rango. What yeah, is we, moving one? We have Chacom, mm. 
and we have some of uh, the Stoker Beef fourth generation pipes. Which also beautiful, have got, by the way. I'm sorry? They're beautiful pipes. They are beautiful pipes. Yeah. Absolutely, they are. And we have Savinelli, and uh, we do the Rossi, some things from, uh, from Ladisi. And we have, of course, we have the generic board pipes from lower end. We sell those as well. Yes. We, tend you, to we have Nording we, pipes too. We have Nording pipes as well. We tend to focus on $200 and under. Okay. And a lot yeah. of the, we don't do a lot in high yeah. grades. We do, we do some Peterson as well. Nice. Uh -huh. Any but it, seems, it, it seems like a lot of the high, high grade pipes are going on the internet right now. So that's, uh, what was that, Frank? You met, you asked him a question. Any, any corn cob? Yes, we have cobs. Absolutely, we do awesome. have Missouri Mershams. Love them. Yeah. I love my corn cob. I love a corn cob. Yeah, we had Morgan it. on uh, about two months ago from Missouri Mershon, and uh, what a great selection of of pipes uh, they have, and they're bringing back some of the old stuff that they kind of discontinued, bringing them back for the newer generation. But you know what? There's an I, interesting history too. Yeah. yeah. The history of the cob is is pretty unique. Was it 1835, I think, or something and when they, they started? Now they have these hybrids. I mean, it's, it's a, there's a whole a whole history and, and chemistry involved in, yeah. in actually producing those cobs. Mm -hmm. It was a pretty good show. If you get a chance, go back and hear it. If you don't know it. Okay. I'll just ask Ed. He was uh, he was around back then. We can. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. hey, oh, wow. 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 you take that from this guy <laughs> hey macarthur macarthur kind of made the pipe uh, a little bit famous too back in the late a 40s. little bit yeah <laughs> that yeah. he did that and he they have did. the pipe named after him they have the macarthur uh, cop so yeah yeah so, big, yeah. Long, yeah so ing tang uh from singapore says that pipe smoking is trendy in asia yeah and um they also especially a big in vietnam indonesia china and the rest of the uh, Asian uh, world out there. Yeah. So, okay. Um, we, we've known that. Well, we see that the at show, the pipe show. The, yeah. the Asians are just buying everything up and bringing them back home. I mean, they're mm -hmm. really, really big into the pipe world. Mm -hmm. that, is, uh, that has kind of calmed down. Uh, those of us guys who have been doing this for a while have noticed that it was a trend for the past handful of years. But uh, um, especially in China, China really was going crazy buying up all kinds of pipes, even at full retail. That's that's calmed down considerably really? uh, since the height. Yeah, hmm. uh, it's it's still happening, but not not like what it was. Is it just you know, because of um, the problem with the virus? It's just economical or? No, this was before the virus. This was already I'm, obviously because of the virus that nobody's really buying much of anything, but. Um, th this was it was definitely quieter last year when I talked to uh, other people in the industry, mm. which what? is which is okay because you can get a better feel for how many pipes you're supposed to make, or how many pipes okay. you're supposed to bring in. You know, I can't get a I can't get a good solid grasp on how much to buy from France or Denmark or or uh, Italy because uh, you know they're when it's being imported. Uh, when I'm importing it and it's being exported here, they assume it's all for America. But mm -hmm. but a lot of the online retailers sell all over the world. Right. So, you know, and, and, and a squirty pipe that an online retailer or a brick and mortar retailer might buy doesn't necessarily go to somebody in the U.S. But it's considered a U.S. property once they export it. You see what I'm saying? So no, it's, it's really hard to understand who's buying water, who's buying where, unless you talk to each individual retailer. But in China, uh, from what I understand, Tim mentioned that the consumption of tobacco is keeping tobacco actually alive in, in China itself. Uh, they're really buying. I believe that. What's that noise? Our glass. Oh. Yeah. I believe uh, are you that. getting a lot of orders from the from Orango to China? No, we don't sell outside of the country. Oh. Okay. Maybe a little bit in Canada, a little bit in Puerto Rico. That's about it. Okay. What do you uh, think is attributing to the downswing that you're seeing for in Asia? What do you what do you think is attributing to that factor right now? I I think it's reaching a saturation point. That's all. Okay. Right. That's interesting. I know they have a, a they have a big pipe show there too in China, right? Um. I know there's one in Asia. 
uh, I know Sugi Pipe Company in Japan puts on a big one. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know if they have anything to do with the one in China or maybe it's Hong Kong. Hell, I, I don't remember. I know Sugi is from Japan, but um, I, think, I think they have something to do in a big way with the one in China or Hong Kong. Sorry. Okay, Hong Kong. I would think anything would be Hong Kong, but, but Ing Tang just said, "Don't Vietnam. discount Vietnam. They are an up-and-coming uh, country with uh, wow. in the, the tobacco that's, world." That's good wow. news. That's good news. I think that's wonderful. Yeah, and yes, uh, Tim actually said there is a huge show in China. Again, we don't know exactly where, but hey, everybody's getting into it. I mean, the leaf is as natural as can be, and um, uh, at least in the pipe industry, yeah, you you you've seen a lot of the old timers coming in. I know smoking a pipe is a different head altogether for me, and I know Bob too, and it kind of just puts you in a very more relaxed nature than even a cigar, um, at least, right? Wouldn't you say? Uh, I would say so, yeah. It's, it's a different head. It's more, more relaxing and really kick back into your chair and melt away into it. It's almost like a solitude thing where you just, you don't even want to talk and to people. You're just enjoying your moment, you know? By holding this pipe, Anything you're saying is mute. I, I, I disagree with everything. Yeah, I, I, I noticed that. I noticed that. And your eyes rolled back, too. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I think you're exactly right on that point because we have people that think they want to try to smoke a pipe. And they're a nervous type of person and they're on the go and blah, blah, blah. And they Give a pack they of buy a pipe and they try it. <laughs> they come in and they say, no, I can't do this. No. Because they smoke a cigar, they're done. They don't want to go through the ritual of holding the pipe, admiring it, and packing it, and puffing it slowly. A lot the, these people that have a nervous habit, like they don't like that. They want to smoke the cigar and be done with it. I'm surprised they're even smoking cigars. Usually, those people are cigarette smokers. Well, some are, I guess, but you know? all you have left with a cigar is a pile of ashes. Yeah. And when you're yeah. done with the pipe, you still have the pipe. Yep. Yeah. So that's why right. these people exactly. start and they buy one or two pipes and the next thing you know, they're hooked. Yeah. And they don't need another pipe. They want another pipe. Of yeah. course. So it becomes an obsession. Yeah. Well, I, I only own one pipe. What? what I only own pipe. one pipe. You only own one? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Me too. You mean 100 right. pipes. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. 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 Owning yeah. one or two pipes unleashes the floodgates, and the next thing you know, you turn around, and you got about 30 to 40 sitting in your thing. And then right. you turn around, and from there, and you're up to 600 pipes like Bob or whatever. <laughs> 800 plus. And count. 800 plus, yeah. Yep. Yep. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. Got 900. I got about 500. Frank, I don't know what you're up to. And I've got, I've got five. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're getting there. I'm getting there. Yeah. I uh, need two at more. least two more. And you got go one weeks. every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two more pipes and you're a collector officially. <laughs> yeah. to Ed, maybe you can get a couple from them to make sure you get one for yeah. day. So Ed, yeah. tell us a little bit more about the shop. Um, we're in India, Indianapolis. Do you have a lot of competition there or what do you do to help promote and get people to your shop compared to the one of the locals? Well, actually there's not, we're, we're pretty well spread out here in Indianapolis. We're on the extreme South end of the city. So I'm, I'm looking out my front window here across the street. It's a, it's a different County, different city. Oh, oh really? So, yeah. We've, we've got this comp There's a North, South, East and West side, obviously like in most cities. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much, there's one or two shops in each quadrant. So really there's not a lot of competition like right next door. That's uh, good for we, you. Yep, yeah, it is. We use social media, uh, you know, Facebook, uh, we do emails, uh, that type of thing to get people in. Uh, a lot of it's word of mouth. That That's a big thing. I mean, if in customer service is a big thing today because it's yeah. non-existent most every place you go, you can't get anybody to help you. That's going to be nice and friendly and, and give you a hand or knowledge about and, and knowledgeable. That's right here. Word. You come in and you, people come in and ask, do you carry this cigar? Do you carry this cigar? If people want something that we don't have, I'll take a, uh, make an effort to get that for them. If they do, if they do want that. So, you know, we do a lot of that. We do special orders as well. We had a good event uh, when I was there with uh, was, that was a punch event, wasn't it? That was, it was. That was, that was a good event. That yeah. was a good event. Yes. 
but like I said, you know, who knows what's going to go forward with the event situation with the virus and all. It's hard to say. And Josh, I, Josh, how big of a ride is it from from us to get down to the shop? Well, it's like well, three hours. Well, hold three on, I'll, hours. I'll answer that in a second. You know, Ed has continuously put money back into his store. He's expanded and diversified his inventory as well, which is which is the key. He doesn't just sit on his hands. He's bought more cases. He brings in more cigars, more pipes, more pipe tobacco. He's not scared to to expand his uh, variety, which I think is really really important. So well, so speaking of that, Ed. Um, uh, so where do you see the future of Pipe Puffer Lounge going? Like, wh- what do you see expansion going on? Do you see a future? Uh, avenues going where do you see the future of pipe puffer lounge heading towards that's that's a good question i'm not really sure myself <laughs> because i'm at a point in my life that you know i'm an old guy okay so the, the question becomes how much longer do i want to do this okay uh some of you guys that have been around a while know there was a gentleman in detroit i think it was max burns i'm sure that uh, josh n- knew him And uh, he was 80 years old, and he still went into his shop every day, every morning, went in there, did some paperwork, talked to the guys, and went home at noon. He was doing that up until he died. So Mm -hmm. that's what I'm looking at, thinking, how much longer do I want to do this? I I don't know. Paul Spaniola. Paul Spaniola up in Flint, Michigan. Same thing. Same thing, right. And well, it's not the, a bad gig, Ed, if you can go home by noon. <laughs> but see, the X factor, but the X factor in this whole thing is the government. Yeah. If the government think, is always a problem. That's a big problem. Yes, we have a twenty four percent tobacco tax now. What if they decide to make it fifty or no. eighty or yeah. who knows what? And well, if they get that through no. <laughs> it's gonna be it's it's a bitch. I mean you think about it. What's oh, yeah. what's there, a tax? You, then you've got the internet players who aren't playing on the same playing field that we are because they're not paying a tobacco tax of that nature. In depending upon what state they're in. Yeah. What's the and, tax uh, rate up in New York now? Isn't it up to like sixty or seventy percent in New York itself? No, no, actually, it's not. It's it's pretty still pretty reasonable. 20, 20, well, they had a they I have a cap. I think they have a cap. Or oh, they they like they have okay. a, they might have a cap. We don't have a cap here, so <laughs> wow. If it, you know, that's the problem. There's no cap. Yeah. And with the new administration coming in, with all the money that's been spent out, uh-huh. I, I can see that they're going to, the legislatures in different states are going to try mm-hmm. to probably get money wherever they can, which would be increasing tobacco taxes. Yeah. And, and alcohol. Yep. And yep. Now, yep. If they look at it on, places, you know. But if they look at it on paper, it looks great. But what happens is people won't they'll, they'll buy online they'll buy from a neighboring state with a lower with a lower tax so i think in, in all reality the states are going to wind up losing money and some states rolled their otp their, their tobacco taxes back after yep. they increased them because they realized their revenues went down instead of going up so that's the x factor is the government you know well, they, they'll, they they'll can, create a whole underground yeah and that could it's like, happen. It's like they did back in the Depression era with uh, with, the, with alcohol. Yeah. 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 So Pipe Puffer is only about a three-hour drive from Chicago. Oh, is it? To, okay. Yeah. Indianapolis is not that far. you got to take in mind uh, uh, the time change. And you got to bring your passport with, too. Cause, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know about that. Right, uh, well, mine is up hey. to date. It's relatively <laughs> new. I think I can make that run. Hey, yeah, but, for us, be about but this. Hey, run. but get this. Going into Indiana, you can pick up Yingling beer, and, you know, you can go uh, pick up a couple cases and bring it back to Illinois. So that's that's the beauty that's part about cool. that. That's cool. I, yeah. I well, always pick we'll up. we'll get Yingling here soon, too. Yes, yeah, yeah. so well, hopefully. We'll let, you, we'll let you Goombas come to Indiana. Okay. <laughs> uh, whoa, <laughs> hey, hey, who's a Goomba? <laughs> <laughs> You're okay. Now, are there, there, there direct flights now, or do we still have to uh... <laughs> I just I just put the car in neutral. It's all downhill. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. But um, you you have a couple of guys working in the shop for you, Ed, because I know I tried to call you a few times. Um, and I just hung somebody... up on you, right? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no the gatekeeper. Yeah, the, the, gatekeeper. Yeah, the gatekeeper. Yeah, I've so, got two other guys that help me uh, help me out and. Uh, They've been with well. One one fellow's been with me over ten years, and the other individual six years. So we, and I learned my lesson uh, to say that I, I don't know if this is going to come across, but 
if you hire the an older fellow that's around a little more responsible, a little more work ethic. You get the young guys in there. Those are the guys that maybe you're going to put some in their pocket. Yeah. They don't have, they don't care as much. Yeah. yeah. They don't, they don't yeah. have the work ethic. They don't have a, they don't feel like it's, they're part of it. Yeah. Right? And I, I'm, I'm sure that's not everywhere, but I've seen that. Yeah. We've it's had general. Uh, it generally, it's uh, general. Uh, yeah. Talking yeah. about today's generation. Yeah. It's yeah. just different. Right? And, uh, you know, when it's not a knock, it's just something for whatever has happened. That's just the way it is. Well, it's we that millennial up. mentality. They they think they should get, you know, a week's pay of uh, in their paycheck for only working three days a week. You know, they they think they're entitled to everything else. It's that millennial yeah, generation. That, you know, well, uh, talking about uh, Singapore, uh, Ing said. We have a 43% tax in Singapore. Wow. All tobacco products must be in plain <laughs> packaging, no advertising allowed, similar right. to Australia, which I think oh, Australia uh, is even higher than uh, that. Same, uh, same uh, thing. Uh, it's like 100. It's Actually, the same it, thing with our girl in, uh, uh, in Greece, Valeria. You, you don't have any uh, display or anything on the packaging when she's smoke, you know, when she's trying to it's pick up tobacco. Plain. Yeah. It's all plain. Yeah, so, so I here's the deal. Uh, if all of America had one tax, we would we wouldn't know the difference. Right. You know, like a lot of the other countries, it's one tax for the whole country or for the whole area. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. But here in America, every state has a different tax. Every city. So every in some cases, every city. That's yeah. right, Kyle. So uh, it, it's different when it's a whole country <laughs> as opposed to Indiana's 24, Illinois is 36, Minnesota's 95. Uh, so the, the, the consumers uh, can buy online and, and the online doesn't charge them the tax. Now, of course, legally, actually, they do. Yes, consume. They some do. do. Some, some, like some do. Order from, well, uh, I'll, I'll use the name because they, they're doing it. Uh, pipes and cigars, for instance. We get charged uh, Illinois tax. State tax, yeah. yeah. Online. yeah. Yep. The One next, of the few, I would think. Yeah. That's, that's, that's good to hear. We as consumers are supposed to be paying the tax on our income tax you yes. know, at the end of the yes. year, which I'm sure everybody does. Oh, yeah. Sure. Every By online way, you purchase. See this cigar? I, uh, <laughs> it, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. That's a nice, that, you got a yeah, nice Yeah, you got ash. a good ash going. Thank you. Yeah, good ash. Oh, look at that ash. Uh, good ash. You're not going to believe me, but I actually made this when I was in Honduras. Ooh, I had to, wow. I've been saving this whole oh, That's system. a homemade wow. one, huh? Hey, don't strain yourself patting yourself on the back there. I mean. Oh, <laughs> oh, this is the one I was going to give to Ed the next time I see him. Oh. Oh, well. Oh, you sure I'm so. Boy, what a guy, Ed. What a guy. I tell you. the eyes of virgins, huh? <laughs> Uh, I, have Barry to, I have to knock the hair off a little bit. <laughs> here's, here's the other Air Force guy that I mentioned to Ed earlier. He's also one of our listeners, Barry Bones Argento. Um, he said Australia tax up 12% every six months, and there is no end in sight. Well, That's ridiculous. Wow. Uh, wow. Abby had told us that um, he, he knows somebody in Australia who he sends tobacco to they, because – I remember him telling, saying that in Australia, there is no smoking. They've eliminated tobacco, and it has to well, be imported. That's the same and thing that's going to happen in Hawaii. You know? Yeah, but he, they're paying 100%. When he sends a tin down to this gentleman, they're actually paying 100% tax on that tin. Yeah, Hawaii is trying to make their whole island smoke-free. Well, I know, the whole island, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I think it's what it's a progressive... Age increase up until like 2030 to where you have to be 100 years old to buy tobacco in Hawaii and whatever. Yeah. It's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. It is absurd. Well, I blame the insurance companies. This is all they're, they're doing. Me too. You I'm know? with you. Absolutely. Yeah. They started this nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. The attorneys. The attorneys. Yeah. It always comes down to that job. Yes. <laughs> yes, it does. Was that, was, was that Preston were, trying no, to get no, in the shop? That was our Mason brother, Kirk, uh, coming in. He's coming on. We can come on shortly. You know Kirk, don't you, from the Cuban? What's up, guys? 
Hey. Obviously, they can't yeah. tell who you are upside down. <laughs> but uh... hey, have Kurt sit next to Ronnie. Kurt, sit next there to. You oh, there go. you go. What's up, guys? He's gonna come on. <laughs> sit down. Have a seat there. We'll get you on in a little bit. Uh, uh, Ang said, "In Singapore, we are almost smoke-free island." Wow. In Singapore, tell me about it. Wow. Yeah, no, that's that's okay. pretty sad. And you can't chew gum in public in Singapore either. You get a really? ticket for chewing gum. Yep. R really? Ask, wow. ask him. Oh my God. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Aang, did you hear that? Are you allowed to smoke gum in, or you know, smoke? Smoke, 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 smoke gum, gum <laughs> in the street? Uh, what are you <laughs> drinking? I <laughs> can't chew gum and, and talk at the same time. He <laughs> smokes yeah. banana peels. He's still into that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. See, the whole idea, and you'll get to know me. It, it, it's all about the. Um, it's about the Ronnieism. Yeah. So I have my own language and I say what I want, but somehow everybody understands yeah. what I say. Smoking Usually we have gum. to get it in All braille, right. but oh. Oh. Usually you get a translator in. <laughs> Oh, you guys translate for me all the time. Ng Tang says, uh, "We allow we're allowed to chew gum, but not smoke it." <laughs> no, 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 I know, I, I know, I know. <laughs> but you can smoke denti if you're into that. <laughs> Chicklet. Chicklet. Chicklets, chicklets, chicklets. <laughs> hey, everybody doesn't know we were just joined here by one of our Mason brothers, Kurt. Um, he is going to be uh, leaving and moving to Nicaragua yeah. over by Esteli, is it? So yeah, he's going to live in the factory. He's just going to smoke all day. Right. He's protesting. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting away from our taxes and going to the uh, the tobacco capital, uh, free capital instead of Cuba. Yeah, yeah that's right. So uh, he'll be away. He's leaving next Thursday. So we just want to get him on board. And, and all the Mason brothers that are on, uh, this is Kurt here. Yes. Say good, your goodbye uh, gonna, farewell speech. Gonna kind of say a little quick goodbye here. You know, I'm I'm moving down to Esteli. Uh, Luciano took me down there the first time three Januarys ago, and we did another trip this the next January, and we visited a couple of other factories besides. Take his head off. Yeah, you can't see his besides, face. Besides, um, <laughs> Not, maybe, maybe we should put it back on. Yeah, <laughs> just, just put the ring down. <laughs> we uh. We visited a couple other factories besides Luciano's, and we actually visited Angostura. Oh, you oh, did, okay. huh? Yeah. Okay. Angostura. Angonorsa. Angonorsa. Your mouth. That's, that's the one, Angonorsa. Angonorsa. You're going to try some of those and, 80 rings when you get down there. He's going now. He speaks no Spanish, so this is going to be really good. Uh, <laughs> so, Pichardo's got so much pull, they went back and they were cutting bales open, and he'd roll a leaf, light it, and just draw right through a straight leaf at Angostura? Really? Anganora. Anganora. Anganorsa. Anganorsa. Tell him, Ed. Tell him. Yeah, Anganorsa. Anganorsa. He's hanging out with me too long. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make up my own words too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he is leaving us for uh, six, seven months, come back sometime in July so he can establish himself down there. Yeah. Rented, mm -hmm. a, rented a three bedroom, three bathroom house with a banana tree and a mango tree out in the backyard. And it's going to cost me a whole. Us. Yes. It's going to cost me a whole 375 bucks a month for rent. Jeez. Wow. Jeez. wow. Life's rough, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> how's the puppy going to. How's the puppy going to accustom to all that and especially the oh, travel you know, move? Max is going to love it. Yeah, I've got, a, I've got an 82 pound cane corso. Cane Corso is the pr correct pronunciation, but everybody knows it as a Cane Corso, Italian Mastiff. Cane Corso. So he's going to be coming down to uh, Nicaragua with me, and uh, we're just going to hang out and sit in the hammock, smoke cigars, drink some Florida Cane rum, and and pass your days. Pass yeah. your days. That's it. Okay, that's the first week. What after that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 He'll be sleeping the second week. He'll be passed out with all that rum drinking. He's going to get one of those woodies by Oscar and sit in that hammock all day. He'll <laughs> right. probably get an email saying, lawyers, guns, and money. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I'll have to get in touch with Alan Gold to get a couple of those uh, big cutters there while he smokes uh, the big 80-inch ring there. Right? Yeah. Ring yeah. Gauge. The 80-ring gauge? Yeah. 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 Arm, man. <laughs> Especially my arm. Man. <laughs> like... You can say hi. Is that the little one? That's my little baby. 
she just turned go. 12. Wow. Like a big backdrop you got there, the garage door. That's nice. Thank you. Yeah. Really yeah. Well, that's that. yeah. You got something you pulled hey, out of your princess, pictures? How you doing? <laughs> she's too cold. She's in her bare feet. <laughs> <laughs> They all complain about the uh, smoke when I come home and I you know, I smell like pipe or cigar smoke. And I'm like, that smell pays for this house. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Smells yep. like money. Yeah, yeah. Like money. Yeah, smoke you like eating money. that pizza. Sure. That smoke put that pizza on your table. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I got, a question for you. I got a question for you guys. Yes. Yeah. Just good, 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 good Italian guys. Who has the best Chicago pizza? Nobody. 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 <laughs> New York. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, there you go. Hey. New York. Oh, they're they're the from New York originally. I'm going to say Aurelio's yeah, in Chicago. You want you want what good that, Kyle, you can answer the question. You want good can. Italian pizza, you go to Aurelio's. That is the best Italian pizza in Chicago by far. Aurelio's. I thought you know what slice is very good down there. It, that's not Italian. That's just coal-fired pizza. But, no, not, no, it's not coal fire. Yes, it is. We like we like Nino's. Right Slice there. is Nino's coal fired really pizza. Good. If you're ever out in Colorado, you got to try Guido's. It's the only person that's got the the crust down at altitude, and it actually tastes like pizza. Really? Oh, it okay. Like, it's a, right, right, right outside of uh, just west of Golden. There would be a problem in Colorado, wouldn't it? Oh, there's they, 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 the place is named Guido's, but it's owned owned by an Afghani guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's sold at 7-Eleven. <laughs> they've, they've, got, they've got a number of pizza joints in Chicago called Old Chicago, and their Italian beef suck. Their 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 pizzas suck. It's just it, getting that altitude. It, and and from what I hear, it's the water that actually makes it. It's yeah. all yeah. about the water. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. So the Chicago water is what Bo, makes Bo it. Bo is saying pizza uno, even Tim. Pizzeria Uno. Pizzeria Uno. Uh, the... I'm going to stick by Aurelio's. I've, uh, I've hey, live and Uno, die by Aurelio's. Hey, Ed. Uno, yes. Dule, or Luma. Ed, you know why pizza's like sex? Why? Even if it ain't that good, it ain't that bad. Even if it's bad, you still want it. Yes, Barry. P- uh... Uh, what do you call? Uh, Barry says Chicago pizza does not compare to New York pizza. That's right. It, That's it's the right. truth. It is. It's. Uh, I've had some good pizza in New York. It's yeah, just, I would it's hope just, so. It's just, it's just different. different. It's it is just different. different. Very it's different. different it, because it, it's thin, thinner crust, right? I like the deep no, dish. No, 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 I personally like the deep dish. Chicago deep dish. No, it's deep check, dish no, no. Aurelio's, Aurelio's is not deep dish. It's thin crust. I, I don't. Okay. The, the deep dish is like a special occasion pizza. The, you don't do that every day. Thin right. crust is still where it's at. It's still the, so the really, price. If you go to Lou Malnati's and you get a sausage pizza, it's got a sausage sitting yeah. on the top of the pizza <laughs> covered with the tomato sauce. Yeah, the sausage put, patty. They don't, oh, pieces, no, no. they don't put little pieces of sausage. They put a whole little <laughs> sausage patty. Yeah, I think I, I agree with both. Hey. Uh, both says basically the pizza in uh, Colorado is uh, coarse water. Is what they cooking it with, okay. right? But yeah, here, here's the thing, though. So as much as these guys talk about New York pizza, when we're in New York, did they take me to a pizza joint? No. They took no. me to Katz's Wait, Deli, to Katz. and that was we it. We took you to the best pastrami <laughs> in the world. We took you to Katz's, all right? We didn't have time. We were kind of in a rush. Next time we do an event, you're having to Anyway, and anything else that we can uh, uh, promote and help you with the with the shop? Yeah. With, uh, you know, what any big plans at all with uh, with Piper at all? Uh, nothing really huge. We're just uh, trying to hold our own through all this pandemic stuff and uh, increase uh, increase sales the best we can. But uh, like Josh said, we're not opposed to bringing in new things and trying new items. So, you know, I'm all for that. You can't just sit still. You've got to listen to your customers is another thing. Hey, you is get, you get, Larry you get still around? coming in asking for something, you get multiple requests. You've got to bring it in. I mean, you have to You have to give it a try. You really do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Space, hey, becomes, space becomes a, a big issue. Sure. Hey, is, is, Larry, is Larry Stout still around? Yes, he is. He still is around, yes. He Good. doesn't do he doesn't do much. He's retired, and uh, he still does a little bit of gun business on the side. So, okay, oh, class okay. three dealer, yeah, that sells the good stuff. Very nice. Yeah. 
Kyle, just to let you know, Barry says that you're not wor- uh, you're not worthy enough for New York pizza yet. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, that's fine. He can't have my Aurelios either, so. Uh, there you go. <laughs> anyway, um, we just w- really want to thank you a lot, Ed. If you, uh, we like to, you know, you and Josh, if you guys want to stay on, we're going to do something. It looks like we lost show. Josh. Yeah. With cousin Frank, we lost Josh. Oh, yeah. we he'll be back. He'll be back. He's not out yet. You can hear the kid in the background, so he's still there. <laughs> Would you like to stay aboard a little bit, Ed, and uh, be sure? I'd like to see the juice get stomped. Absolutely. All right. All right. Well, folks, it is almost that time that we're going to have cousin Frank. And like I mentioned earlier, we got a little package tonight uh, from Drew Estates. Um, it's, it's got a little bit of a couple of things that for their promos. Uh, you're going to get a uh, Drew Estates opening day uh, uh, cigar. We got a little banner here for you guys, too. Um, Ooh, look at that. Very we nice. We got a little banner for you guys for your smoke rooms. Nice. Uh, we got a uh, sticker that you can put on the highlight, cup. right? <laughs> that will cost the button. Everybody Ooh, needs the button. button. The That's button. Drew Estates button. And we also, for all you guys, you always have to have a bottle opener. Oh, yeah. We got a uh, little bottle opener there. So a little bit of this, a little bottle bit of that from Drew like Estates. What's that? Nice. Thing? It's a good package. bottle opener. Put the background there. Josh, you see those? There's my cousin there. He's over my left shoulder. <laughs> my other cousin's over my right shoulder. I'm the only one in the corner looking in to those three clowns. So, you know, that's why. Those are, that's my. Uh, <laughs> what can I tell you? <laughs> anyway, folks, we're going to turn it over to Cousin Frank. And uh, he loves history and he loves making us look like fools. Take it away, Frank. Oh, All right. Well, for the winners, right. for the winners, hold on. Oh. Remember, Ky- uh, Kyle and I are watching the Facebook page now. You have to be the first person with the correct answer. No, well, hold on. To win tonight's gift. We still got yeah. the three lead-up questions, so that are right. to us. That's for us. These are yeah. the warm-up yeah. questions. We'll let you know when to start t- chiming in for you on yeah. Facebook. Exactly. exactly, Kyle. That's the way to introduce me. Let them know this is that time of the show where my cousins and Kyle and our guests have the opportunity to answer these incredibly difficult questions <laughs> on, uh, uh, in history, because it's usually this week in history. So 42. we're going to start <laughs> this one. Uh, let's go back to, oh, 1917. Okay. That's All when right. Bob was born. <laughs> Just around that time. Bob was uh, 17 years old then, then. <laughs> this, this priest founds Boys Town. Who's the priest? Oh, uh, Bing Whoa. Crosby. <laughs> <laughs> Father Flanagan. There we go. <laughs> yeah, Father Flanagan. The nice. Father Flanagan. There you go. Edward J. Oh, Flanagan. My, hey, wow. I, I knew my cousins wouldn't get it, so... Uh, oh, he got Bing Crosby. What are you talking about? <laughs> it was close. I was, I was almost going to screw up and say Spencer Davis, but the Spencer Tracy. Say, Spencer Davis, that was a good band. Yeah. Yeah. Nick Tracy. What? Right. <laughs> this is number two, guys. Yep. Uh, we're going to go, we'll scoot up a couple of years. We'll go to 1925. Ooh, okay. All right. This was the very first motel that opened. Bates. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, not the movie. And the master ran it. This is a little, a little it, it precedes. Gosh, I only see your stomach. Motel <laughs> no, no, Inn. No, 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 sorry. California. There you go, handsome. <laughs> Motel, Motel Inn in California. Oh, he's 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 on to something. He's Holiday on, Inn. 1926. He's on to it's it is in California. Howard Johnson. It's it's Motel of San Luis. Oh, oh. This- San Luis Osbego. Yep. Yeah, in 1925, December 12th, the day before my birthday. Wow. Who the hell knew that? That was me. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. Okay. That was, that was, He's cheating. That was Kurt <laughs> on his Google. 
Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> and it's a cheap way of him letting us know his birthday's this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. Yes. That's yeah. right. That's right. And he won't be here for it. No, I will. Oh, he will? Yeah, he will? I'll be there this well, week. Well, we're not going to have All a party. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> you got to come next week. Maybe we'll have something for you. <laughs> All right. Number three for you, you clowns. Uh, all right, I don't want to give you an easy one because I don't want to make it seem like like you guys actually know something. Okay. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll toss this one, one up uh, up there and see if anybody realizes this. Actually, it happened very close. It might be one of Bob's heroes Uh-oh. that was shot. Uh, we know that York. one. Really, that was so easy. Forty years ago today, John Lennon, Strawberry yeah. Fields, John Lennon, and, 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 and who was the murderer, Ron? Yoko Ono. <laughs> That's the answer, Yoko. She killed the Beatles too. I love it. I love it. I don't love even it. want to mention that name, Frank. Forget about it. Mark David Chapman. Mark David Chapman. David Chapman. Yep. Yeah. He's been trying to get out on parole. Like, I think every year he tries to get out on parole. Yeah, he's like Manson. He'll get out soon. Don't worry. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. He'll get out real soon. As soon as he walks out, he's a dead man. He knows it. Yep. Yep. Is, is this one for the money? This, this is one for is the, for the, the money. No, this is this is for the audience. Yeah, yeah. Yep. This is this the, is it. This is the All money right, shot. Folks, get yourself ready. Money We're shot. Looking at Facebook. We got a lot of people answering already. We got Bo still. How could they there. be answering? We well, haven't no, even we, got the question. Well, yet. they've been answering our <laughs> question. But go ahead, Frank. Okay, Frank. Go. Right. This happened back in 1901. It was the first wireless transmission of over 2,000 miles across the Atlantic. Oh, okay. Now, who, who, do, you, who do you want? Who sends uh, that first wireless transmission? Okay. 2,000 miles across the Atlantic. And our Italian friends? Should yeah. Out there, should yeah, they? absolutely. Oh, you gave me you gave me right <laughs> Don't say it. Don't say it. This is what you want It was a French guy, I think. Right? <laughs> 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 Yes, this was uh, just, a, just ahead of the Sopranos. Bruce says Al Gore. <laughs> Al Gore? Al Gore. <laughs> He's close. Bo, Bo Cook has Marconi. Bo, 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 Bo says, says Marconi. There he is, winner. Marconi, you see, I saved the money one for a nice Italian bet at the board. Bo Cook. That's it, but Bo Cook ain't no Italian. I can Bo tell Cook. you that. It was Bo Cuccarini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was Bo I mean, more He changed his name. <laughs> it was an easy one, too. Yeah, that was, was easy. Congratulations, wow. Bo. Yeah, uh, who gets it? We'll have to get you to the uh, Jew Estates, and thank you very much for uh, staying on board all this time to, to see your brother Kurt here, too. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yep. Hey, uh, see you later, Bo. We just want to say thank you very much to Ed. Josh, for coming on board. We hope you guys had a wonderful time. We know we did. And, Ed, we're wishing you all the best with your lounge. And uh, if there's Thank anything you. else that we can do for you, please let us know. And hopefully maybe down in the future. Uh, we Make can, a run uh, down there, yeah. yeah. Well, we can see him hopefully at Chicago. But uh, Worshipful yeah. Master Chris Becker is on right now. Oh, Worshipful Master Chris. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, you there, Worshipful. Hey, and, Chris. Uh, we, if there's anything we can do, we'd love to get you back in 2021 to see how the uh, so-called pandemic uh, is uh, changing. Pan, 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 panic? Pandemic. It's a pandemic. It's a pandemic. It's almost like the panoramic. Wait a minute. He's got to put his hat back art, on. Art, art, panorama, <laughs> art pandemic. Panoramademic. I think it's I think it's pronounced pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks Ed, guys, appreciate it. Yeah, Ed, Ed, thank you so Ed. much. Yeah, guys, Ed, if you let us know, you soon, buddy. Nice Ed, if you, you let us know it. when you've got an event going on in 2020, let us know if you got an event going on in 2020. We'll come do a, a show at your shop live, and we'll we'll bring go. the posse. If so, let us know. Come down to Estelle, it. If any of you guys get down to Esteli, go over to Como Rico. It's a little fritanga just east of the uh, cathedral in downtown Esteli. And ask for Kirk, and they'll guide you over to my house. Yeah. They'll walk you across That's the usually the red light district down there. <laughs> <laughs> That's, Oscar's, that's Oscar's mom's joint. <laughs> anyway, 
great. And uh, if, Thank you, if, if, if things like Kyle said, if something comes up, maybe we could do a special run on a Saturday and, uh, and see if good. we could be out and do the show live. We can so, do that. So, Thank you. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year's, and it was a Cheers, pleasure. everyone. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks Thanks for hooking us up. Ciao. Ciao. We'll see you soon, buddy. Good night. And everyone, you guys. Uh, well, a good week. Keep them smoking. And thanks for supporting us. And hope to see you all next week. From now till then, keep them smoking, everyone. Take care. Have a great night. So long, man. Love you, guys. You good. <laughs>